Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to take a look at two approaches that Johnny Smith uses when playing the blues. Let's take a look. All of these lines we're going to take a look at today all come from Johnny Smith's solo on Bag's Groove, which I'd previously done a lesson on as a part of my Building Technique Through Vocabulary series. But there's so much great stuff in this two-chorus solo that it warrants another video. So we're going to take a look at two approaches that Johnny Smith uses. The first one is a very obvious one for a jazz musician, which is playing through the changes. The second one is kind of ignoring the changes and just playing the blues. So let's start playing the changes. We're playing a blues in the key of B flat. So B flat to E flat, B flat, and B flat altered, E flat, maybe E diminished, B flat, G7, C minor 7, F7, 1, 6, 2, 5, so some sort of turnaround to get back. So those are our changes we're kind of looking at right now. So this first thing, we're going to take a look at the first four measures and, and see what Johnny Smith plays there. So here's the first four measures. So the first chord is B flat seven. And so what he does is he plays this classic bebop uh, device of just uh, chromatically going from your third to your fifth and use it as a triplet. And he's, he's, he's slurring the first three notes and then picking the last note. And then jumps down to the root. Now what happens after that is it goes to the four chord. So he does the same thing, the same thing. But, but he ends his line a little differently. So he starts in the G natural here, which is the third of E flat. And chromatically goes up to B flat. It goes down to A, C, B flat, A, G. Which leads us down to, which is back to the one chord. Where he just plays a B flat triad. Nothing complicated there. Okay, now on measure four, he plays this line, which leads us right to the E flat chord, because we, we, we drop right down to the G, right? So right here, he goes for the F, which is the fifth of B flat, pulls off to the, the flat five, jumps, jumps up to the G, and pulls off to the F again. So it's kind of like we're doing a, we're kind of doing a, uh, an enclosure on the fifth of the, of the chord, and then jumps down the seventh arpeggio. So F, D, B flat, A flat, which leads us beautifully to G, which is the third of our E flat seven chord. Now we have one more line for this playing the changes part of this. This comes from measures seven and eight of the blues, where we go one up to six, which leads us to the two chord. So right here he plays. So let's take a look at what's going on there. So we're over B flat seven. So we're going from the flat third, chromatically up to the fifth, and up to the root. So, so and we're and we're using slides during that. So, so I'm using my first finger for the for the D flat, second finger here, and I'm sliding up. Third finger it's on the E, sliding up to the F, and the pinky on the on the B flat. Then we jump down to the E flat to C sharp, and then we slide up to the D, which is kind of like we're going in an enclosure, but we're just fingering it differently because the slide has led us to this part of the guitar rather than back here. Once you slide to this D, we've hit G7 officially because that's our fifth. D, we go up to F, which is our flat seven, C, B flat, B natural, so we're enclosing the B. We're jumping up to the A flat. This is a really common bebop device. We take your, you go from your third and jump up to your flat nine. Charlie Parker uses this all the time. 
and the line ends there. It doesn't resolve to C. He just lets it sit, which is really cool. I wish I could do more of that in my playing. I tend to always force the resolutions, but he just lets it sit for a second. I love that. So to summarize, we have B flat seven, up to G seven, which will land on our C minor. So for the second idea that, that Johnny Smith uses is just playing the blues scale rather than just ignoring the changes. He does it a couple times throughout the solo, but the, the part I want to highlight is the way he ends his solo. Where it's, it's over the 2-5, so C minor 7, F7, but he doesn't play any of that. He just plays the B-flat blues scale, and it's fantastic. So let's break down what's going on. Over the C minor 7, he kind of starts in C, because these notes aren't in the scale. G and C, and he slides up to D flat. And then B flat, F. So, so now we're in the B flat pentatonic. So there's that first part. Now over the second measure of this, he plays this really classic blues line, where we go from the fourth of the pentatonic scale, up to the flat 5, up to the root, back to the flat five to the four, and we slide both of those, and flat three, down to the root, and the fifth. And so that's our two five. Now, keep in mind, we're not acknowledging the two five at all, we're just playing blues. But it sounds so great that we can take a reprieve from the changes for a second to just play a really killing melody. To finish this lineup, we go back up to the flat third, fourth, and we kind of enclose the flat third, going, going back down to the C. We go down to the root, fifth, flat third, flat five, flat third, fourth, second, third, fifth, sixth, and then this B flat six chord. So that, that last part, So the whole line looks like this. So now I'm going to play a chorus to, to try to demonstrate these ideas and see, you know, how I can effectively use this. You know, kind of going between blues vocabulary and regular bebop playing the changes vocabulary. Hope you get something out of this. Thanks for checking out the lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.